All eyes turn west this weekend as Hollywood prepares for the 66th annual Golden Globe Awards. The Globes often turn out to be a preview for the upcoming Oscar Awards, leaving a lot at stake for the winners and the losers. Julia Boriston tells us how one film critic has figured out how to get a piece of the pie. Can you tell if a movie is going to be a hit or a dud? Are you willing to bet on it? Soon you may be able to cash in on that hunch. One investment firm, Cantor Fitzgerald, wants to launch an actual market for trading domestic box office futures. Imagine buying and selling futures, not of commodities like oil and electricity, but how a movie will perform at the box office up to six months before it's released. It's targeted to the motion picture industry, to the investment community, banks, and frankly, uh, to anybody who has an interest in movie. Let's say you're convinced the next James Bond movie will be a blockbuster. If its backers price its contract at $200, it's based on an expected $200 million box office. You predict it'll do $250 million, so you buy a $250 contract. If you're right, you get the spread. Cantor Entertainment also owns the Hollywood Stock Exchange, whose 700,000 registered users buy and sell virtual shares of movie stocks and star bonds. The new Cantor Exchange hopes to trade real money. But many wonder if studios will place public bets and if big movies can draw big dollars. You know, look, there's obviously a fascination in the public with their performance at the box office. Whether it translates to, you know, a million or two million people actually putting down real money to, to see how films do, I'm a little skeptical. Despite the naysayers, Cantor is hoping to launch the exchange in 2009. But in addition to getting regulatory approval, they'll need the backers of big Hollywood movies to get involved. Julia Borston, CNBC Business News. You can catch the 2009 Golden Globes right here on NBC Augusta tomorrow night at 8. Well, it was a doggone good day afternoon. Next, we'll tell you how one park is opening up its gates to the dogs. Plus, Rich Rogers is next with your Storm Tracker forecast. You're watching NBC Augusta 26 News at 11. Please tell me we're going to have more good weather, <laughs> at least good warmer temperatures like we did today in January of all times. Well, it, it was warm today, but that is over with. Uh, we're going to start cooling down. Now tomorrow, not too bad though, about 60, so that's not bad, but we're going to have a gradual cool down all the way through the week. But we've got some rain coming through first. We'll show you that on Storm Tracker ESP Live Doppler radar. Dry right now for the southern portion of the area, at least for the most part, but we are seeing some showers up to the north uh, in Columbia County and also uh, Edgefield County. Uh, some pretty decent showers coming down just north of Evans along Highway 221 and also over into Edgefield County. So we're going to uh, be watching that uh, as we go through the evening. Those showers continue to move in. No rain today. We have, do have a deficit of about an inch uh, for the year so far, almost an inch. So we need every bit of rain we can get tonight. Tonight slows dropping down to around 52 in Augusta. Then tomorrow about 60 degrees, our high temperature, 58 in Columbia. As we zoom in locally, we'll see highs in the upper 50s. Uh, from Appling over towards Saluda and lower 60s from Millen to Denmark. We'll have more in just a few minutes. Steve? <laughs> well, it was a dog day afternoon in Augusta today. The grand opening of the Pendleton Kings Dog Park took place this afternoon. Dozens of dogs and their owners came out <laughs> to enjoy the park in what turned out to be a beautiful January day. Pet owners say they've been looking forward to the park opening for a long time. Dog park is great. I think it's a great opportunity for uh, not only the dogs to get together, but dog owners to get together. There's nowhere else to take your dog in Augusta. Now I can bring my big old Henry out here every afternoon and take and run his energy out. Well, if you want to treat Sparky to some doggy fun, the park stays open until 6 o'clock every day. The Carolina Panthers are looking for the franchise's third NFC title game appearance in a six-year span. Jason Folk will tell you how they're faring, plus a brutal stretch of schedule continuing for the Augusta State basketball team. Highlights after the break. You're watching NBC Augusta 26 News at 11. According to the website scrapbook.com, there are over 96 quotes about home. Examples include home is where the heart is and home sweet home. For the Carolina Panthers, there's really only one quote they care about when it comes to their home. 
undefeated at home. The Panthers are the only team in the NFL to finish the regular season 8-0 at home, looking to make it 9-0 and clinch a spot in next week's NFC Championship game. Instead, it's the Arizona Cardinals forcing five Jake DeLome interceptions. They lead 33-7, ouch, late in the fourth. Congratulations to Augustus Ken Wisenhut. His Cardinals well on their way to playing in next week's NFC title game. Well, a spot in the AFC Championship game on the line as Baltimore visited Tennessee this afternoon. Titans would strike first in the first. Chris Johnson from seven yards out. Tennessee takes a 7-0 lead, but Baltimore would respond. Joe Flacco looking to become the first rookie quarterback to win two playoff games. 48-yard strike to Derek Mason ties the game at 7. A couple of second-half field goals would tie it at 10. Ravens with the ball, 250 left in regulation. Flacco to Todd Heap, who makes an incredible catch. That would set up Matt Stover with 57 seconds left from 43 yards out. That is your game winner. Baltimore advances to next week's AFC Championship game with the 13-10 victory. And, um, you know, we were glad that we got the chance. Um, and then you got to credit you got to credit the guys for making a couple of big plays for us. You know, got to credit the offensive line for battling all game. Got to credit our receivers, and you got to credit Todd Heat for going up and making a play. Well, I've been I was asked prior to the uh, game this past week that I've never had a game winner in a playoff game. So uh, I felt like during the course of the season I had a rough start, missing field goals. I wish I could have had back. One of them I missed in the Tennessee game it ended up costing us because we lost by three. Uh, but when the game really counted, the opportunity showed itself again. Well, coming off games with Clayton State and USC Aiken this week, the Murderer's Row schedule for Augusta State continued tonight as they welcomed in 10-1 Armstrong Atlantic State. Early on, Augusta State looking good. Garrett Seiler, anytime the big fella gets it that deep, there's nobody in America can stop him. few possessions later, gets it in again. He finishes with the flush this time, but as you can tell by Dipmetrius' expression, he either ate a bad taco or there was some questionable officiating. It would be the latter. Seiler out most of the first half with foul trouble. Guys like Fred Brathwaite would pick up the slack. Nice dribble drop. Brathwaite finished with 20 points. Then it's Ty Bell knocking down the three. The Jaguars trailed by five at the half, but they do what a good team does. They rally in the second half to get the 74. 72 win. Well, how about the ASU women also hosting Armstrong Atlanta State? This was a good one. Pick things up. Less than two minutes left in regulation. Jaguars down four. Brittany Gerard, three of her 12, makes it a one point game. Move ahead. 26 seconds left in regulation. Game tied at 54 until Armstrong's Ashley Duhart knocks down the three Pirates. Take a 57 54 lead. ASU one final shot. Nicole Mealing gets a pretty good look. Just a bit long, Armstrong holds on for the 57-54 victory. With the USC Aiken men and women on the road at Georgia Southwestern, the Lady Pacers get a three from Meredith Leg with 25 seconds left in regulation to give them the 71-68 win. Satu Lepidon had 17 for the Pacers in the win. In the men's game, Chris Commons and Josh Jolly combined for 44 points as the Pacers win going away 88-69 the final in that one. Well, Clemson. Getting set for showdowns with Wake Forest in North Carolina next week. First, though, looking to get by North Carolina State this afternoon. Tigers start the game. Well, the PGA Tour season getting underway with the Mercedes Championship in beautiful Hawaii. Jeff Ogilvy came in with a one-shot lead. He would quickly extend that on the first for birdie. Gets it to drop. Then on the fifth, gets another birdie to drop here. Ogilvy shoots an eight under 65. That he will take a six-shot lead into tomorrow's final round. So Ogilvy partying in Hawaii. Not a bad place to party. And speaking of parties, Super Bowl coming up. We got some parties coming up. Yes, sir. The Super Bowl coming up here. And at NBC Augusta, we'd like to see uh, what's your party. You guys, if you're throwing a good party at home, we want to be there. We might even come to your house to see if you truly throw one of the best Super Bowl parties. So, because of that, we, you can go to our website, NBCAugusta.com. Just go to right there, click on our little web link that says, I believe, Super Bowl Party tab. Just click on that, fill out all the information, and, you know, submit your form. And if we, uh, if we like what we see, if, just tell us what makes your party so great, so super. And if uh, it grabs our attention, we'll broadcast it live on NBC Augusta 26 News at 11, Super Bowl Sunday. And who knows? I guess it's Ken Wins and Hunt, maybe there. <laughs> that would be cool. Yes. I think so. so. So, and coming up next, we'll be right back with the 6 o'clock more of the 11 p.m. news. Thanks for watching. We'll hope to see you back here tomorrow night at 6. Have a great night.